we're down in Matthew's moose unit. Just got here. And we're getting organized because we're gonna kill a moose. Not we, Matthew. But I told the camera crew, their job is to get Matthew to say something other than, uh-huh, yeah, mm-hmm, sure, yep. Matthew's a man of many words. If you believe many is more is like less than five, but more than one. You got any words, Matthew? Yeah. Oh, boy, look at that. He's fired <laughs> up. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Matthew, you got anything to say? Yeah. Sorry, folks. That's how it is. He takes after his mom. This hunt that you're about to see is on my list of hunts one of the most anticipated hunts I could ever, ever ask for. This is a Montana moose hunt in one of my favorite parts of all of Montana with my favorite hunting partner, my son, Matthew. And for he and I to be able to go out and share this time together, rare time, time we hardly ever get to do anymore, and do it with a special species like Shira's moose. I just, I couldn't ask for any more. map says that we're right in the heart of it here. There's a big flashing moose. When Matthew found out that he drew this tag, he happened to be home in Bozeman that week. And I think it was in June when the results came out. The next day, we went down there, went and spent a day scouting, just driving around, getting to know the roads, getting to know where the hunting area was. Just the stuff that makes a hunt exciting. All the anticipation. All the thoughts of, oh, what's this gonna be? How's it gonna work out? I'm not sure what Matthew was thinking. He took a new job when he has a moose tag in his pocket. Uh, that happened the other way around. He got the job and then the moose tag. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> nothing I could do about that. I'm gonna be on the road. I'm not gonna have time to scout. Yeah, well. I'm probably gonna be coming right here from New Mexico, picking you up at the airport, and we're gonna be going in blind. We'll make it work. <laughs> All right. This is our one day. We looked at the calendar. This is our one day, pretty much, isn't it? <clears throat> Between now and yeah. all the volunteer stuff, all the filming stuff. Family commitments, Family. all sorts of things. Yeah, I gotta go back to Minnesota. People would say, how can you only have one day in three months? But I hit the road in a very short period of time. Yep. And then I'm gone nonstop. And if I want to stay married when I am home, I better not tell my wife, oh, I'm going to go scout for moose. I know I'm only home for two days. Let's drive around when it gets closer to all those willows there. We're still about two miles from all those willows. Yeah. I'll, I'll, rush, I'll walk down through them and flush them out and you kind of inventory them. Uh, I don't know if we need to go that far. Or you can, you can go flush them and I'll count them as no. they come out. Oh, there's two moose right there. I mean, we got what we wanted to out of today. Did you? Yeah. I mean, we really just wanted to take a look and make sure we knew where we were going and 
and then scope out what it all looked like here. And yeah. I think we've done that. Figure out what parts are open to moose hunting and which parts aren't. Yeah. Tags like this tag are so rare. If you think about it, Matthew's applied for 16 years. I've applied for 27 years, and this is the first moose tag we've drawn in Montana. That's a lot of combined years of applications before we finally hit the jackpot. And hit the jackpot we did. This is the, probably the most desired unit for moose hunting in all of Montana. There's five tags, and there often is the what's called the super tag or the governor tag holder down there. And it's just, it's an incredible place. The scenery is amazing, the wildlife is amazing. It's public land, it's, it's part of this refuge system that is funded by hunters. It is just, well, it, it's remarkable. All right, lucky moose tag winner. What are you gonna do? Yeah, so we're out here at the range practicing with the rifle that I want to use for the moose tag that I drew. Um, it's a 300 Win Mag. This is the first time that I've ever shot this specific rifle. And so I wanted to make sure I got out to the range and practiced with it so I knew kind of the ins and outs of how this specific rifle was shooting. Um, made sure that I was on point before getting out to the field and picking up the rifle and uh, going from there. It's going to be harder when you're not on a bench on a sled, and that's the nature of it. And so part of working through practice is actually getting out there and replicating the conditions as closely as you can to what you're going to be doing. This is a Howa Model 1500, and on top here we have the Leupold VX6, and it's in a 3 to 18. 3 to 18 means 3 the lowest magnification is three. You turn it to the highest magnification and you get 18. And this is the CDS model, we call it, because it's got the CDS dials where you can turn it to whatever range you're shooting at. And this is shooting 180 grain Nosler you see right here, Acubon. And you can tell the Acubon because it's got the white tip on the end. And that is serious medicine for any animal that walks in North America. You hit them with 180 grain Acubon out of just about anything that Nosler makes. I don't care if it's a 308, a 300 wind mag, a 300 short mag, that animal's not going anywhere. Matthew found one that looks like he's got, I don't know, looks like uh, one of those uh, chair lifts on the side of each of his. Holy smokes, we gotta go kill that one. I don't care if we've only been here 15 minutes. Would you kill him? Uh, I would like to get a better look at him. A better look? I can tell you from right here, Matthew, Shira's moose don't get 50 inches <laughs> wide regularly. You think this one's 50 inches wide? Well, if he's not 50, he's in the mid to high 40s. I didn't even see that one. Where did he come from? I, I don't know. I just saw the flash of light. It is, right now, it is 1 o'clock. We need to mark where he is. We need to go kill that thing. <laughs> All right. How are we going to do it? We get our smooth slippers on and we walk two miles that way and we pull whack him. <laughs> Easier said than done. Nothing for men of our talent. Mm -hmm. I've looked at a lot of Shira's moose in my life, Matthew, and those are two of the biggest Shira's moose I've ever seen. I thought you said you hadn't looked at a lot of these in the past. No, I said I've not hunted them. I've seen tons of them when I'm out grouse hunting and elk hunting. You ready? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. You got the strategy. What are we doing? Uh, going downwind? Yeah, we're going to go chase this thing. <laughs> That's a hell of a strategy. Yeah, we're going to go chase it. Charge right out there. Go for it. Yeah. 
You're, You're gonna carry my pack too, right? I'm not carrying a pack. Oh, that's a big one. That's a, a Jerry Pritchard would say that's a great big one. <laughs> I want to get into that dead grayish stuff there. The terrain in this area was quite challenging. Um, pretty much the entire flat area, flat-ish area that we were looking at was swampland or marshland or whatever it's called. And there were sections that were just under a foot of standing water. There were sections that were grassy but had a bunch of very, very soft ground on it. And so when we were hiking around in this, we were all wearing either rubber boots or waders of some kind. And I made the mistake of not bringing a pair of waders that actually fit me properly. Walking through this under normal conditions, the water, the grass, the unstable ground, all the bushes, the willow trees, everything, would be difficult enough as it was uh, without adding in the complications of having to do this in footwear that doesn't fit.
gives me a little more excitement. So, uh, we're going to head back up where we can hopefully see some more of them moving around before the end of the day. And that's the beauty of hunting. The beauty of that is you are the tag holder, you define what you want out of the hunt, and you make it your experience. You make it your journey, where you want to go with it, how you want it to play out. And I admire Matthew for having the, I guess, maturity and the resolve to say, you know what, my old man's over here acting like a fool, but I I'm not phased by him. I've seen him do this too many times. I'm just gonna play this for what I can. And we decided, all right, neither of those are the really big one. These are the other two that we've seen. Where is the big one? Tomorrow morning, we're gonna climb up this ridge of glass with the sun on our back. And we'll be able to look over all this stuff. And I don't know what we'll see, but I suspect it'll be more than just these two bulls here. There's two cows. I've seen three cows today and two bulls. But I would swear that there is another bull that's bigger than either of those two out oh here, but maybe not. Maybe from far away with the sun on his antlers, he just looked that big, I don't know. But while well, elk hunting and grouse hunting, I've seen a lot of Shagra's bulls. And that one I looked at through the spotter looked to me to be one of the biggest Shagra's bulls I've ever seen. But it could be wrong. This one's a really, really nice one. I don't blame Matthew if I was him. I'd be wanting to just look around a little more myself. So I'm not sure what could be more beautiful than this second day. The, the morning was just unbelievable there's elk out over here and there's some white-tailed deer over here and we're getting to the little trailhead parking lot where we've been doing most of our glassing and before we even get there here comes a cow moose and two calves and we look over there there's two young bulls right on the edge of the willows I'm like oh my goodness and way out there just looking with my naked eye I'm like there are there there's moose everywhere here there's four here, there's two there, there's six in that group, and then there's like four or five others scattered around. Yeah. So there's 15 or so moves here and you can't find one you want. Not right now at least. We'll see. And guess we should have got here earlier. I guess so. Oh, and the sun comes up and lights all this up. I can't imagine what we're going to see for moves. Yeah. What do you think they're going to do? you think they're going to come back into these willows? Yeah, that's what I guess, but I'm no expert. So we're sitting there and just, uh, for me anyhow, hearing the trumpeter swans and the ducks and the, there's some elk bugling up the mountain and just watching the sun rise on this frosted swamp was unbelievable. It was worth every bit of the hunt to just be there watching such an isolated, desolate, remote place come to life in the morning. It was like, man, how could you be a hunter? How could you be any kind of wildlife enthusiast and stand here and not say, I am the luckiest guy around to live in a country with this sort of opportunity? One of the problems of, if you want to call it a problem, of this second morning is I sit on the board of a national nonprofit group and they'd scheduled a conference call that I had to be on at nine o'clock. I told Matthew, I said, one of the camera guys is gonna have to drive me up to that mountain way over there because you can get coverage there. While we're over there, you and Marcus, you guys keep scouring and looking for all these moose. And so Michael and I jump in his rig and we're driving over there and I'm looking out the window thinking, dang, we should be over looking for moose, not on a conference call. And all of a sudden, Michael hits the brakes. He's like, look at that. <laughs> Holy cow. That thing is huge. Well, what makes him really huge is he's only about 200 yards yeah. off the road on dry ground. Oh my God, why didn't they come with us? 
And I'm thinking, hell with the conference call, maybe we should go back and get Matthew. Tell him to come and shoot this thing because one that close to the road, he gets a lot of extra points for being that close to the road. But duty calls, off I go. Go up there, do my conference call, it takes about an hour. And on our way back, I told Michael, I said, you know, I would bet any money these guys are gonna have some fabricated story about, oh, the big one came by while you were on your call and we were gonna shoot him, but you weren't here, blah, blah, blah. So we found one out here. He's bigger than pretty much anything else we've seen today. Um, we're not entirely sure he could be the big one that we saw yesterday, but even if he's not, he's one that I'm interested in going after. So we're gonna wait for these guys to get back and hopefully just keep track of him until then. And then once they get back, we're gonna make a plan to try to figure out how to go get him. All right, Matthew, I have the suspicion that you would not be sitting here on a spotting scope unless you saw something you were interested in. Yeah, well, there's something interesting. What? Big one? Take a look. Well, that's the one you passed last night. I know, imagine one that dwarfs that. <laughs> Just wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? There's another one in that little patch of willows just to the left of that, that when he stands next to the one you're looking at, makes him look, I don't know, like a two-year-old bull. <laughs> I couldn't tell if they were faking this level of excitement or if it was truly that level of excitement. But Marcus was really excited. And Matthew doesn't seem very excited ever. He's just so calm, such an even keel. But when he looked at me and said, Dad, I found the bull I'm gonna kill. I'm like, you making that up or is that for real? He's like, no, let's go, let's go. So I, I know you haven't gotten a good view of it, but he's out there. We've been keeping an, an eye on it. He hasn't moved. Uh, let's just go for it. So how do you want to go? Straight out there. <laughs> Straight from here, yeah. straight line? Yeah. You ready? I'm following you. All right, let's go. Let's go. Boy, he's in a hurry now. You would be too if you saw this one. All right. We'll see. It's been a long time since I've seen Matthew hustling across the swamp or across any landscape like he is at this point. He's just like, come on, let's go, let's go. And so in my mind, I'm like, how cool is this? He is fired up. He, he wants to shoot this moose. We got about 200 or 250 yards away, and just over the ridge, we could see this much smaller bull moose watching us the whole way. And to my surprise, they were not very skittish. I'm used to animals that as soon as they see you, they're, they're just gone. And this moose just stayed bedded down and watched us for a while. And so we crept closer to see what we could see, see if we could get a glimpse of the moose that I was after. So we're moving forward, moving forward. I'm thinking to myself, we got to get in an open area. We can't get in one of these tight spots because we're not going to have shooting angles. And so we move forward and as we're doing that, all of a sudden two bulls stand up over here. Da, 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 da. About the one on Neither of them. You don't want any of those three. 
And pretty soon it looks like there's bulls standing up everywhere. I'm losing count. Like, was that the same one or are those different ones? I don't know if there's two or three bulls. Where's the big one? Be on there as quick as that cow moves. You gotta dump him. Is that the one you want? Be ready if that cow moves. Hurry. There's too much brush in the way. Got anything now? No. This way. About two more steps. I'll stop him if he takes another step. He's not leaving that cow. He's been following her. Yeah. Stop him, stop him. Take him again. Take him again. Shoot until he's done. I can't, it's blocked. He's, he's down. He's down. <sighs> That first shot whopped him. I couldn't even hear the second shot. I had my ears plugged. Well, we did it. You got a moose. That's the big one you were looking for, right? That's the one, right? <laughs> Marcus is like, what in the world? I'm just looking at Matthew and he, he's got this mix of adrenaline and excitement, elation, everything going on at one time. And I'm just like, you know what? I wish I could bottle this day. I wish I could put it in a bottle and relive it every minute of my life. That's a good bull, Matthew. I don't know whoever gave us the headings here, but we walked right into him. Yeah. I think he's down. Yeah. So Elvis has left the building. The king. That is a large animal. Hope you brought a big knife. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think the knives are gonna be the problem. It, it's hard to put into words what it means to hunt with your kids, especially as you get older and you, your lives start being further apart. They're not there with you every day. Then they go off to college and now they're only home parts of the summer. And then they go get jobs and they're only home a week out of the year. This was a special day, special moment. It's hard to explain. Look the old gray nose on him. Oh. Wow. This thing is real heavy. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Bull. Old gray haired boy. It's interesting how much more of a uh, paddle Develop, there is over here than, yeah, than on that side. The points yeah, are way different. Cool. I try to go on at least one hunt a year with my dad, and 
I've managed to do that the last few years, which has been really good. Um, so I was happy to make it happen again, especially with a tag as rare as this moose tag that I was fortunate enough to draw. A lot of times your wildlife agency will send you a package and say, in the field if you can, do this, do this, and it helps. And we always talk about how hunting is conservation. Well, when Matthew reads off this list here and you see all the data that uh, we as moose hunters are collecting, or he is collecting, or am I collecting? Uh, we'll both collect it. Okay. When you see how much we collect, you'll realize how hunting does help provide data, information that otherwise agencies might not be able to get. So just for this moose, Matthew, what's on the list? Yeah, so we have to get a small tissue sample Okay, uh, that's need... going to be easy. He weighs about yeah. Um, I, I think we plenty can spare. of tissue there. Uh, we need to get a tooth. A tooth. We'll get that out of the lower front. What you do, folks, is in the lower front jaw, you'll see there's a diagram. But the two front teeth, you cut them way down into the root, and you just work them loose. Because if you break them, they're not usable. They're not usable no. for what they do. Uh, check the rump fat, which rump is an fat. indication of health. <laughs> right. They're trying to see how these bulls are faring after the rub. Uh, evidence of liver disease. So we'll go in and check the liver. If you ever seen a, a liver flukes, they're usually white marked. Uh, sometimes it can create black scarring, I think, on the liver. It, there's a whole list of stuff yep. in there what it can do, but you'll see the liver won't look normal. So we'll go in and check that. Yep, uh, tips of the ears to check for parasites. So this bull here, his ears are perfect. So sometimes there are certain parasites that reduce the blood flow to the ends of the ears. In uh, through, I think it affects, somehow affects their arterial system or something. So you'll see the ends of their ears are just really frayed, no hair. This guy's in good shape. Yep. And then finally, just some questions about rutting behavior. Okay, so what was today, October 24th? Yep. And this guy was rutting. He stood there with that cow. He was following her, at least the footage you guys showed me. Yeah. It looked like he was following her all over here. Yeah. Hunting That's is it. conservation. And now we got, I feel like we're in a lab. <laughs> You've got your uh, got my sterile gloves, gloves on. Everything. And as we're doing all the field dressing and picture taking, for me, this was just a time to sit there and think about the fact that Matthew and I are probably gonna never be on another Shiver's moose hunt again. Yeah, we might get lucky, I might draw a tag, but I start getting this reflective feeling of how special it is. I think I enjoy it more, I think I appreciate it more as I get older. This is why I do this. This is what means the most to me. And if I, if I can keep doing this, my life is whole. My fulfillment, my happiness is going to be hard to beat. It is what I live for. Matthew's carrying the head and antlers, and I've got a load of gear and stuff. And I'm just walking out, looking at these beautiful mountains, smelling the the bog and the, and the swamp and thinking to myself, you know what, this is a special time. And it, I started to get kind of emotional thinking about this is, this is a once in a lifetime thing, Randy, and it's, it's coming to a close. Your, your, your opportunity to, to spend another week with your son chasing critters, chasing animals, acquiring food, doing what you guys love to do out here on the public lands, another chapter's coming to an end. And you know in your mind there's only so many chapters in your book. You don't know how long your book is, you don't know how many chapters. But you know that every time you turn the page, every day of hunting, another chapter closes. And you don't get to go back. All you have is that time, that chapter that you're living and and it just, it's hard. It, it's, it's hard but fulfilling. It's a strange emotion to, to do it, to, to be thinking about that. And, and as we were packing out, 
it was, it was hard for me. It, I just knew that as special as this time was, as rewarding and gratifying as, as these moments are, they don't last forever. They, they come and they're gone. And you better enjoy it, Randy. You better never take it for granted. If you take anything from watching this episode, I hope you take from it that these times are special. These times don't come around every day. Go and do it. Go with your child, with your spouse, with your parent, whatever. Don't take it for granted. There's only so many of these days. Don't let them pass by. And if you go and do it, I can assure you, it will be some of the sweetest memories that you will ever take from the woods.